Hey, hello everybody. Welcome back to our June 2016 edition of Keeping It Real. I'm your host. Uh, Stirring the pot. Host. Stirring the pot. One show too oh many. Oh my gosh, yes. <laughs> we were just talking about senior moments off camera. I just right. had one live in front of you. I do right. a couple of shows for this network and i got to keep remembering where I'm at and what time it is and what we're doing. This is Stirring the Pot, by the way. And uh, it's... <laughs> It's the show you love to hate, folks. It's yeah, a, you know, no matter what side of the political fence you're on, we're going to offend you. So, but we're going to do it in a nice way. You know, we're going to do it in a fun way. We have uh, intelligent conversations here and try to come up with solutions. Intelligent. Oh my goodness. Oh yeah. Man. Yeah. Uh, I've, I want to introduce <laughs> my co-hosts for tonight. To my left is Mr. Matthew Schwartz of the Schwartz Law Group. Yes, it's yeah. Thank you. and he uh, specializes in entertainment law, among other things, and he's licensed to practice in uh, California and Georgia. Yes. Have I missed anything? No, that's pretty that's good. That's about I, it? I do uh, comprehensive commercial transactions, intellectual right. property, licensing, that kind of stuff. Accidents? I will do some personal injury. Yes, yes. Uh, referred to me personally. I know from firsthand. Yeah, I had an accident, and uh, he was my guy. So you three up? accidents. Three. <laughs> None of them were his fault. <laughs> I was rear-ended. Let's make it very yeah. clear. Uh, unbelievable. Three times he's come to a complete stop at the same traffic light. That's incredible. Every year he gets one of these things. It's an amazing, an amazing phenomenon. That, but anyway. Oh well. Uh, it all turned out okay. It's his second job. Yeah. Right, right. right. Well, <laughs> uh, anyway, you remember that movie, The Fortune Cookie? Did you ever yeah. see it? I love Walter that movie. Walter Matthau. Yeah, Jack great Herman. movie. Yeah. Watch The Fortune Cookie, folks. Then you'll know what kind of guy I am. There you go. Anyway, my other guest <laughs> is our world-famous engineer, the voice behind the scenes. <laughs> you always hear, Mr. Al Burroughs. Finally joining right. us. Finally joining us. On camera. Let's have a funky good time. Al's always the guy that's laughing in the background. Yeah, that's So you. we wanted yeah. to bring him forward, you know, so At you Chris. can all see him. At Chris. <laughs> yeah. Never yeah. us. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> geez, Al, I'm so excited to have you in front of the camera. Yeah, here. man, this is going to be great. I've been yeah. looking forward to I just it, hope you don't upstage us, you know. Man, please. <laughs> <laughs> I had to write stuff down, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I introduced a little segment, a couple of... Uh, uh, shows ago called uh, Observations of the Month. So, you know, I kind of asked everybody uh, to uh, have an observation that they'd like to maybe talk about as a beginning to this show. My observation is the recent vote in Britain to leave the European Union. Personally, I love that vote by the Brits. I think uh, they finally got up the courage to realize that they want their country back. And by that I mean they're not going to allow somebody in another country to tell people in Britain what they can and cannot do, which is what is happening in Europe in general with these socialist-type governments that have taken over. Uh, so I think it's a great thing for the Brits. Um, they're going to maintain their, their country, their culture, their monetary system, their defense, and uh, they're a very good and strong ally and have been for many years since we defeated them on our continent. And uh, I'm just glad that they uh, did the right thing, and I hope other countries follow, and it sure looks like they're going to. And I think the stock market, after uh, collapsing the last couple of days, uh, has become a great buying opportunity, but that's my personal observation. <laughs> Anybody want to comment on my personal observation? Well, I think the stock market will come back when people realize that the sky's not going to fall just because Britain pulled out of the European right. Union. And, of course, I think uh, other countries will follow suit. Um, and it makes sense. The European Union, uh, the way, at least the way they structured it, was a very bad idea. Mm -hmm. You have a lot of countries that were more productive than others, um, and they were taxed, and they had their money taken by a strong centralized government and given to other countries that had very irresponsible debts and no way out of those debts. And so you have countries like uh, Britain, France, and Germany that are losers in that situation because they're paying for the irresponsible governing of these other countries. Such as um, what? Greece. Greece, exactly. Greece, Greece, Turkey, anybody else imploded. that's not pulling their weight. Um, and, and they're not effectively represented. Britain, uh, the British people, are not effectively represented in the European Union. They don't do what's in the best interest of Britain. They do what's in the best interest of themselves, really. And it's kind of analogous to some of the problems that we have here in our own uh, government. You ha we have a federal government that um, is not really responsive to all of its citizens. It's becoming an entity unto itself at the expense of the people, and um, which is why 
uh, conservatives are very much in favor of state sovereignty. What we want to do is we want our states and our local governments to have more power, really, than the federal government. The federal government, at least as it was originally intended, was supposed to be a very narrowly uh, drawn entity with limited right. powers. The Constitution is a limiting document. It's supposed to be only doing a handful of things, protecting its people from foreign and domestic invaders, um, you know, national roads, of course, copyright and patent protection, federal courts to resolve disputes, and that's about it. But the federal government's grown into something that everybody anticipates is going to be controlling everything. And so you have a lot of people who are producing in one state, and they have their money taken, and it, it gets uh, you have the federal uh, government taking their piece. They're paying out unions. They're paying out special interests. And then they do a project like a bridge to nowhere in Alaska that everybody else is not benefiting from. And that's the story of the European Union. Crony capitalism. Right. And, the, and, the, and now I'm not saying there isn't a an appropriate role for a centralized government in either Europe or the United States. What I'm saying is it has to be extraordinarily limited. And each of the countries should reserve, the countries that is in the European Union and the sovereign states in the United States, should be reserving most of the powers and taking care of things locally. When you, when you get down to it, okay, and, and you see how much influence do you as a citizen have, a citizen of Georgia have, over your congressman or worse, your senator? When you look at the numbers, you are, when you're talking about your U.S. Senator, you are one of millions and millions and millions of people whose voice really doesn't matter at all to your U.S. Senator. That's true. But now take that to the local le um, level. How, you know, your state assemblymen and your state senators are representing much, m much less people than your U.S. Senator. Mm -hmm. So your voice matters a little bit more. And take that down to the next level, your county government. And your and your city governments, mm -hmm. you're, now you're geometrically stronger in terms of number on and your influence on your local representatives. So what it doesn't matter whether you're liberal or conservative. You have to be able to look at this and say, wait a second, do we really want a faceless centralized government that doesn't have the influence of the people bearing down on it, controlling everything? and running everything for everybody, or do you want more and most of that power to be set on the local government where you have the most amount of influence and on where it? you're effective. Whether you're liberal yeah. or conservative, you want, your, you want to have influence over your representatives. And that is a key reason why we should be returning to the original principles of federalism, which included equal powers of state sovereignty, so that you actually have a direct impact on your representatives. It's not going to happen if you give everything to the federal government. But if you reserve most of those powers, as the Constitution is designed to do through the Tenth Amendment, which says that any power not specifically enumerated in the Constitution is expressly reserved to the states and the people, if we respect that, we will have more control over our government instead of creating this entity which now seeks to rule us instead of to serve us. Well said. I'd like to have your thoughts on that subject, Al. Okay. Um, Where do you come down on all this? You better okay. not disagree with me. <laughs> <laughs> you know I will, right? That's why we want you. <laughs> we need some spice in this okay, show. Okay, all right. <laughs> okay, first of all, uh, my whole thing is is that I, I, I build my life from the bottom up. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll give you an example. Um, there was an economic downturn, if I'm not mistaken, in 1987. Okay? Um, my business was going gangbusters from 1986 all the way into 1994. I wasn't into stock market, I wasn't into uh, politics, I wasn't into uh, global economics, or none of that. All I knew was is that I had a business that I was taking care of and I was running it and I had engineers and secretaries and, and all that stuff and was doing a nonprofit on top of that which was very popular at over what 1,500, 2,000 members here in the city of Atlanta with no internet. Hmm. Um, yeah. I was doing all of that and was totally oblivious to this whole thing of, oh, the stock market crashed in 1987. I had no clue. And it, the thought of it made me realize that the most important thing that you can do as an individual first is to take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. The most focus that you should have should be on yourself. It's basically co-signing for what you just said, but just to me is just a, a complete turnaround from what is actually going on. In other words, a person shouldn't be sitting around. Nine times out of ten, I can learn everything I need to know about a candidate for president of the United States in about a week and a half. I don't have to sit around and listen to them for two years. 
<laughs> fight each other and talk about how big their hands are and all that. I mean, it, I don't need that, <laughs> you know. Um, I can sit down, okay, now I'm saying, yes, you have the primary, so yeah, okay, I'll sit down, I'll look at the candidates, and I'll, and I'll vote when it times when Georgia kind of, uh, time for Georgia to vote. And then when the presidential, can, can, uh, presidential election comes, I'll sit down, I'll look at the candidates, look at their views. I mean, they got it all on the Internet. By then, they should have their platforms and everything else laid out on the Internet for me to take a look at, take a look at it, figure out who I want to vote for. But sitting around worrying about all this other willy-nilly stuff, you know. And, and but, but being an entrepreneur and a businessman with more than a couple of irons in the fire, uh, who do you lean toward being I mean, more progressive, more conservative. We tried. My wife and I tried. When we came down here, we tried. We, we went to the Republican Party. I actually talked to her and, and helped her understand because again, I was running, running the business mm -hmm. when we met, and and we we tried to go to the Republican Party. Uh, after several Brownie Town comments and blah 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 in the middle of meetings and all that kind of stuff, and the fact that you know we were really look, we really started to realize that it was more of a token situation. That would mm -hmm. that we were having to deal with show up so that there were some black people in the audience like you know uh, you know Donald Trump yeah there's there's my black guy or whatever we said you know we started to realize okay well this is just not so we probably are more independent right now Hillary Clinton but right now n neither one of the parties everybody's got the same problem neither yeah. one of the parties are all that great not in, the, yeah, not the, the, indep best. the independent party is getting a lot of attention right now. Mm -hmm because of what's going on with these two parties. Um, I got enough to say about Hillary. I got enough to say about Donald. And if I was to look at where I was leaning, I would like to vote Republican. Because, but I would like to vote Republican, but the problem is the Republican Party, I have noticed over the past, since the first Obama election, has just been messing up by the numbers hmm. messing up by the numbers and I've talked to my Republican friends talked to them talked to them and they are just not listening they are so caught up in the hype they're not paying attention to anything that's going on the demographics are changing things that are changing all around them and they want to talk about Hillary and Hillary and her email that's going to take care of itself what they need to be worried about is a Democrat getting in the White House period Forget about the fact that Hillary might get in there, because if Hillary doesn't survive once she gets in there, there's going to be another Democrat waiting to take her place. So the thing is, is that right now, everybody, with Hillary in the email, Hillary in the email, I get it. It's drama. And we got to remember that, you know, I did a show about two years ago, three years ago, and we actually counted the number of reality TV shows that were on the air at the time. It was over 200. United States has just been got, got, got caught up in the drama. That, and they're not on the air just for kicks. They make money. Mm. People watch those They're cheap things. to produce. Yeah, and they're cheap to produce. So my point is is that America has just gotten caught up in the drama. And that's why, we're for the first time ever, we get to see, hear a presidential candidate talk about how big his hands are. I mean, think about it. You know, I mean, I, I was watching a, a video yes, uh, this morning. And the guy was talking about the fact that when um, George Bush looked at his watch during one of the debates, <sighs> you would have thought that the world was coming to an end. Because Marco he took a drink of water in some debate and it became a big deal. Exactly. It's stupid. Exactly. It was, and, a, yeah, it was a response to the uh, yeah. State of the Union yeah. address. I, I, so, so my point is, is I, to, to, to cut everything off, the, the point is, is that I think there are, one, personally, I have bigger fish to fry than to sit around and listen to all of this mm. right now. And second of all, I think that when it comes to voting for the Republican Party, I think the Republican Party has basically just... They're, they're giving away the house right now because they're so busy with Fox News and some of these other channels and some of the because I, the news is entertainment. People get that confused. Fox yeah. News is entertainment. They do it under the guise of giving you information, but it's entertainment because I'm in the entertainment business. I understand TV. Well, I think a couple of things, if I might yeah, interject. Mm -hmm. um, first thing is the election is Trump's to lose. I think he's a shoe in personally, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for a lot of reasons. Okay. Um, and the second thing is, I saw a very disturbing thing on um, the Internet this morning. I believe it was the Drudge Report. And on a highway in Virginia, they had these flatbed trailers hauling these um, 
uh, automobiles, mm -hmm. or they're not. They're like vans, okay? Mm -hmm. But they're UN vans. Mm -hmm. What the hell are the UN vans doing in this country? I am so afraid well, that the being, Democrats. They're manufactured here. They're probably going to be shipped to. Well, Europe. no, they said that they had some other proof that the UN was coming in at the uh, request of the government to be some sort of an entity on our right. soil right. to. Uh, to monitor the elections? To mon no, to monitor uh, uh, hate groups. Really? Yeah. Hate groups. You know what that means? That means anybody with a Confederate flag, anybody with a gun, that doesn't mean a, a radical Islamist terrorist. That's what that means. That's how I took it. And I take offense to it. That goes back to what I said in the beginning about I'm so glad that the Brits are going to take their own country back. And if we don't watch it, we better be aware that the Democratic government in power will do anything to take our rights away, and that includes gun rights. And there will be a civil war with blood in this country again if that happens. That's my thought, and I firmly believe that. Okay. I would like to respond mm -hmm. to what Al said. Um, I, I, you seem to be giving a little bit of short shrift to the email issue, and I don't think it's a very minor issue. It is a, it's a felony. And, oh, no, and, I didn't say it was, a, right. it was minor. My point is, is that in the end, complaining about Hillary and the emails is not going to rush the federal government to take her to court, is my point. Either either well, she's going to go to court or she's not, the, my the, point. They, they, and they, and they that, problem, people, that problem is a de democratic problem. If you think about it, it's really a democratic problem. The, but they want the people, they want the voters to know that Hillary Clinton, we already have enough information that's public to show that she's, already, that she's committed felonies with respect to mm -hmm. her email, her email account. I mean, she has destroyed she's intentionally destroyed evidence she's mm -hmm. obstructed justice mm -hmm. she violated a statute which which mm -hmm. prohibits the destruction of federal information mm -hmm. prohibits it and in mm -hmm. fact not only does it make it a felony okay but it says in the statute that if you violate that statute you are ineligible to hold any federal office whatsoever so it actually dis disqualifies her from becoming president and she's still running She's still running. Of course she's still Why? running. Why? But well, that's the whole point. No, that's my whole well, point. My, my, my point is that it's not, it's not a bad thing to, to tell the voters about this because no, voters need to be outraged about that. Now, you're right that another uh, a Democratic candidate will come to the fore mm -hmm. should Hillary drop no, out no. or become uh, Go to jail uh, indicted or whatever. Or whatever. Mm -hmm. But um, but she's now the standard bearer. She's now it's the the, the presumptive candidate, and mm -hmm. so they, they need to concentrate on that. But... See, but, but it, Granted, everything you said is true. When I say the Republicans are dropping the ball, my whole point is is that when I look at what happened in 2008, when I look at what, hap what happened in 2012, and I look at what's happening right now, the Republican Party has been its own worst enemy in terms of it being able to handle its business. You and I said you and I had a conversation, and you and we talked about various different issues. And you said, "Well, look," at, and I said, "But what are the it, what are the uh, the, the points? Issues. Yeah, well, the the points that the Republican Party mm -hmm. have. You know, what 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 are their ideas? And then, and you gave me some of their ideas. And my point to all of that was, well, it sounds like to me they can't sell their ideas. They have good ideas, mm -hmm. but they can't sell them. Right. You know, not one of two things. Either they can't sell them because they can't sell them, or they can't sell them because people are not interested in them. No, I, I agree with two. you 100%. The Republican Party has a marketing issue. They got a serious they are, marketing issue. They are issue. not good at their at selling their message, or, or messaging at all. That's 100% correct. But mm -hmm. let's get back to the uh, issue that was right behind that, which is which way are you leaning? Mm -hmm. And you said, I want to vote Republican, but they're screwing it up. And and it's a given that they're not good at messaging. But I, but if you look at the issue by issue, I think that you should vote Republican because I think that you. I mean, if you, it's kind of hard. I'll be the first to say. I mean, I can't, Donald, I you don't know where Donald Trump's going. Thank okay? you. you. don't know where Donald Trump's Thank going. You. We didn't even got there yet. No, no, no. We know, but the but the but, but the foil to that is we do know where Hillary Clinton's going. Okay, we know what she's. She's more of the same. So as I would. Barack so, Obama. so the question. I answer my so question. So is it better? Was, to, is it better to throw the hail mary pass with Donald Trump and hope he does the right thing? Hope he catches it and then runs in the right direction. Or do you go with the Democratic Party, where you know is taking us off the cliff? I mean, it, the thing is, is that when I say the Republican Party is not thinking about, I, I, I took a note. I took a note. Okay, and this is what what to me is really part of the problem. No teleprompters. No, no teleprompters. <laughs> <laughs> okay, first of all, 
there are right now they're thirty eight percent Democrat, thirty two percent Republican. In the last election, mm -hmm. the exit polls, thirty eight percent were Democrat, thirty two percent were Republican, twenty nine percent were independent. Okay? Now, when for the last election, two thousand twelve, people who predicted Mitt Romney would win the presidential election presidential election, <laughs> Dick Morris, Larry Kudlow, Carl Rove, George Will, Glenn Beck, and that's just that group. This is the group that these people are listening to. And they led them down a road of, oh, the Republican Party is going to win. Your boy, um, uh, Dick Morris, he said a landslide victory. Mm -hmm. I remember that. Okay. All right. He now, lost his job at Fox after that. <laughs> <laughs> Only landslide with him. <laughs> so when I say the Republican Party has a real disconnect going on, my point is, is that they need to fix that. That's why you have a Donald Trump, because the Republican Party is so disconnected with their base with, that they can't even get out of their own way right now. And, and, and you let a Donald Trump walk in who nobody knows. you got what? OK, so let's talk about the candidates. I mean, the uh, people who are not backing him right now. Well, no. You got oh, the last wait, wait, four presidents. I, I, I want to address something. Let's, let's talk about the issues and then and then okay. say which party do you think okay. is going I'm to probably, I'm probably, I would probably vote independent. I probably would vote independent. Who's the independent? There. What I, I've seen him on TV. I don't know his name. I figure I don't know his name when I need to go vote. But I, I've seen the guy on TV and listen. Is, to a, who, there, is there an independent party? Or yeah, there is an independent party. Okay. Yeah, that's that's running right now. Yeah, and and right now, I mean, they're taking a a good twelve percent of the vote right now. They're trying to get to that fifteen so that they can get into the uh, the right. debates. I, I disagree with with something you said. Mm -hmm. That uh, that's the reason that we have a Donald Trump. No, that's part of part the reason. Of, okay. A strong part. Okay. You know. I disagree with that, and okay. I'll tell you why. Mm -hmm. The reason that we've got a candidate like Donald Trump is he went up against 17 other politicians. Okay? Point taken. Number one. All Republicans. Yeah, all mm -hmm. Republicans. Mm -hmm. Everybody that is a registered Republican voter voted in strong conservative legislatures two or three years ago, whenever that election was held. It was a freaking landslide. They told them what direction we need mm -hmm. to push the country, mm -hmm. and they completely ignored us. That's why you got Donald Trump, because they're not going to ignore us anymore. Okay? Mm -hmm. This is not only a protest vote. It's a, it's a life-changing, completely, uh, uh, I don't know the word to use, but the country's starting to pivot. I and I see it. England has started to pivot. I see it. Other countries are going to follow suit. And I see it. The I, Philippines just, excuse me, mm -hmm. the Philippines just got a, a president who is going to publicly execute drug dealers mm -hmm. and, and control the crime in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. Now the drug dealers have, have put out a, a hit on him, but the guy mm -hmm. is already <laughs> starting to do it. This is, the, the country is sick of the crime. We're sick of being politically correct. We're sick of being uh, minimized. We're sick of being told how stupid we are if we don't put the right person in power. And we're absolutely sick of the federal government not doing what we want them to do. That's why you got Donald Trump. I think you, right now you got, because they're, they're talking about angry white males right now with Donald Trump. Oh, that's we're what, angry. That's, that's what they're we're talking angry. about. We're angry. Okay. Trust me. But my thing is this. When I look at the voters who are people who are voting for Donald Trump, and you've got, again, angry white males is what they're saying and blah, 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 blah. But it's not all angry no, no, white I, males. I get it. But, but, I get but, it. But, but the angry, but I, I'm just are saying there angry white males? Yes. But are, they, are they angry because they're white? No, no, they're no, angry no. because they're Americans, and everybody should be yeah. angry. No, but see, it's not a male issue. It's not a white see, male issue. What you just said yeah. is the Republican part problem. Everybody should be angry. That's the Republican problem because the Republican Party are looking at things and say this is the way it should be, and the whole world is saying, well, this is the way it is. But no, but that's this is the way it should be, and that's the problem with the Republican Party. You've got to get out of the things. That's the way things should be, and look at the way things are, and figure out how you the whole thing of marketing and promoting. You know, you creative people are in the Democratic Party because they turn them loose. They they turn these guys loose to be creative. It's My cre whole thing is is that you've got to get some creative people involved. When I went to read these Republican meetings, and I'm looking at them, I'm like, you guys. I mean, here's look. Obama wins the first election, and before he even gets put into office, the first thing that the Republican Party does is say, we're not voting on anything that you send up here. Now, what kind of foolishness is that? They're not doing their jobs. They could at least vote. But to say well, you're not going to vote on anything, that was in 2008. That was about the dumbest thing that you could have ever could because they weren't doing their job. At least put the thing on the floor, put it up for a vote. You, you got the power, vote it down. 
You know, and and the thing is, is that that's why you got Obamacare and a lot of this other stuff going because the Republican Party decided that they were going to do absolutely nothing, and then Trump comes along and says, "I'm going to do something." You could have had Mickey Mouse stand up there and say, "I'm going to do Trump. something," and they would have said, "Oh, okay, yeah, cool, we'll go with that." Why? Because the Republican Party did absolutely nothing. That's what I'm saying. The, they're the, they're not, their own worst enemy. No, right now. Re, you're you're right and you're wrong, and I'll tell you where you're right. The Republican Party absolutely there was not one Republican that voted for Obamacare. Right. Thank God, that, the Obamacare because they sent a message in, on how stupid the, that whole the, program that was is. before the Republicans got the majority in Congress. I got that, but see, but here's here's the other thing. Here's the other thing. On that note, my whole thing with there being an Obamacare because. Healthcare was not an issue when Obama came into office. Healthcare had been an issue for a long time. Okay, the thing is, is that people were in the, in the midst of losing their jobs. The economy's tanking. Blah 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 blah. We had a whole two thousand thing kick in. When people were looking at their situation, first of all, healthcare we all know was an issue before that because healthcare costs were rising. My whole and and when you sat down and explained to me. What the Republicans are proposing for health care, I said, that might work. We can have a conversation about that. But that was the first time I'd heard of it. They just right. came okay, up with their so plan. my point is, is that now that the Democrats have taken something and at least put something on the table, it can be wrong all day long. <laughs> my whole thing was is that why didn't the Republicans step up and deal with that issue before it got to the point where the Democrats had the power to actually put something in uh, on the table and make it happen. I fault the Republicans for not stepping up before that. Don't sit there and just say, no, 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 no. Oh, no, no, we're not going to deal with that. And then here comes Obama. Obama says, boom. And you're like, oh, I'm going to have a heart attack. I'm coming to join you, Elizabeth. You know, no, you can't I, do that. I want Matt to respond to that. He's been sitting here patiently. <laughs> um... <laughs> the, uh, they they should have done something a long Obama time ago. Came out, look, the, 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 what happens is uh, Harry Reid was the uh, Democrat mm -hmm. majority leader. Mm -hmm. And uh, when Obamacare was passed, they had the majority. Mm -hmm. Now, You're right. t people like Tom Price, which is one of our uh, mm -hmm. representatives here in Georgia, had come up with uh, the plan that I explained to you, which mm -hmm. is a phenomenal free market-based plan to address all these terrible problems of rising health costs. Okay? Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Now, the iterations of that plan had been sent up to for consideration to the Senate and Harry Reid took it off. So when you say, well the Republicans did nothing, we don't hear anything with the Republicans, the Democrats made sure that they that the Republican plan never saw the light of day and then they said it's either our plan or nothing and you don't want nothing because if you have nothing, everybody's gonna go bankrupt like they're already going bankrupt. So we really need Obamacare because there's really nothing. And then you have Republicans say, well, but, but wait, 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 we got a plan, we got a plan. And, and, and the Democrats Price say, No, 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 it's either ours or nothing. And That's Tom why Price, but, 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 but Tom Price is a doctor. But wait a minute, but wait a minute. When when they were passing laws when when uh, Bush was saying, yeah, everybody should be able to buy a house and we're just going to let the free market reign and all this other kind of stuff. And then we find out that they're out there selling these mortgages left and right and everybody just making all Excuse kind of... Excuse me, that was under Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton and George Bush. George Bush was the one when, when he left about, office. Are you talking about the Community Reinvestment Act? Whatever it was. Yeah. The it was, thing that led to the 2007 right. meltdown? Right, right, yeah. right, 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 okay. right. Okay. But the thing is, is that, you know, when, again, I'm not looking at health care and saying, okay, yeah, what you're saying is true. But my whole thing is we have a whole history. Ted Kennedy was trying to get that thing. It needed to be addressed. And my whole thing is is that I get it. It may not be the right thing. But it never should have laid there on the table with nobody doing anything about it until now you got Obama. Now everybody wants to act like the world's coming to an end. It should have been dealt with long before now. And that's my problem with the Republican Party. You're the party. The Republican Party is a party of no. We're going to sit here and we're going to say no, 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 no. And that, then when somebody does something, oh, well, I guess we better get up and do something now. And that's been their problem. People have been complaining well, about that. That's for a how long you time. see it. That's huh? why Trump is where he is well, today. Again, I disagree with you. I, I Respectfully. Think, I, I, think that, I think that he is coming and saying, I will fix it, I will make it happen, I will make America great again, whatever that means. Do you okay? think this country is better in the last eight years or worse? In I again, general. I again, okay, and I will say it again, like I said earlier, my world, my world today is better than it was last year. Okay. And I'm talking about in a major way. We know this. 
But the reason it's better than it was last year, four times better than it was last year, was because I take personal control of my life. Right. I believe in people taking personal control of their lives. I wish everybody thought like that. Yeah. But I'm that's the principle of the Republican Party. It's the principle of the Republican <laughs> yeah. Party. Why? Which is why I have my frustration with the Republican Party. Here's the thing. Taking this to the next level, because I look at things as being multifaceted. We don't, the, 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 all the politics and all that kind of stuff. The real problem is we have a technology problem. Technology is taking over jobs. They're mm -hmm. predicting that within the next 20 years, 50% of the jobs in America will be gone. That's 60 million jobs will be gone. Technology is wiping out jobs left and right. And so people are saying, I, I don't have a job. I don't have insurance. I'm having to take this low-wage job, blah, 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 blah. And what happens is corporations, what they will, um, we go through an economic downturn. The corporations lay off a bunch of people. Then what they do is, by the time they get ready to hire again, somebody's created technology to take away those jobs. Hmm. Okay? There was a time where farming accounted for 50% of the jobs in this country. By 2012, I think it accounted for 2%. Yeah, corporations have taken over the farm. Okay, carpets, mm -hmm. uh, car manufacturing, you d name it. My point is that because you had used to have to weld those cars together, now you got machines that weld those cars together. Well, that's true. You know? that's a, that's so my point is, yeah. is that you got a lot of people who don't have jobs. They don't have anywhere to go. They need to be retrained. Nobody's telling them to retrain just to train. That's what I did. Number one, get them off the hell off of welfare and get them in a school to learn a trade. But but wait a minute, if you're in the Republican Party, you you just said the way Republican Repu Republicans should think is the way I think, right? Be go, 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 go put myself in school. Be a master of your own destiny. Exactly. So the whole thing is, is that to me, the reason I do that is because the more control I stay of my own life, the less influence, no matter who's in the White House, the less influence they will have over my life. That is true. Matt, I'm sorry. Do you want to? I'm sorry, man. Uh, that's all right. Interject um, something. I would just say that um, yeah, that a lot of jobs are going to be lost, but a lot of jobs are going to be created. There's going to be some jobs because, created. Because here's the thing. I mean, um, somebody had to develop the technology that eventually replace the jobs that we're going to lose. The people who are developing that technology are starting companies and they're employing people and they're writing code and it's a different type of job. So I don't necessarily think there's going to be a net loss. There could be, but the, the, I think the problem that you did identify is that people who are in school uh, or some type of program now to learn a trade or, or some uh, usable skill, are, they're learning things that are going to be obsolete very soon. In 30 seconds. Right, and they're going to have to be... Able, <laughs> I got my degree, Mom. They're going to be able, <laughs> they're gonna have to be able to be flexible and to adjust to a, a different market than what they're training for. Exactly. So, Because our society, because of rapidly advancing technology, has become re really mercurial. It's changing all the time. Right. And our people have to be uh, able to deal with that. From 2000 to 2010, there was a net gain in jobs of zero. From 2000 to 2010 because of technology and technology changing jobs. The thing is, is that here's the problem with technology. Actually, it's probably been a loss. Because you can't go yeah. by those labor statistics. Okay, they're loaded. Well, I mean, but, but I mean, they're loaded for both sides. I mean, you know, that, that, that's why I'm saying you, all that fiddle-faddle. If you cut somebody's grass on one day, they'll say, oh, you had a job. All that fiddle-faddle <laughs> that's going on in <laughs> D.C. I'll, I'll tell you what's but, happened but, but, for sure in the last eight years. There's been a big divide amongst the people. Right. This has been the most divisive government in my lifetime. Trust me, if a Republican gets there, you're going to have the same problem. No, I guarantee you. No. And, I, and I'll tell you why. Because if, if I, if, let's take the three of us, okay? Let's just say it takes eight hours for the three of us to learn a job each. That's 24 hours of manpower just to learn the job, okay? Let's say the same guy, this guy over here, and in eight hours he can write a program that does the same thing the three of us do, mm -hmm. okay? The problem is, is that the, the skill we have, is not scalable because we got to take another eight hours to train somebody else, another eight hours to train somebody else. Take some. This guy, once he writes this program, it's scalable over all these machines, and he never has to write another bit, a little bit of code. And that's the problem with technology. When we say that, okay, we got one guy over here who's who's got a job over here, well, this guy is writing code that takes the place of so many more people, and that's the problem with technology. And I mean, I'm saying the technology people are screaming and hollering, you guys better do something with these people because we're these jobs are going to be replaced corporations are dead it's funny thing about corporations corporations said okay well here's what we want to do we're going to take we're going to take our business and first of all we're going to get it out of we're going to get out of pension business 401k we're going to get that try to get out of health care we're going to okay their whole thing is to get to constantly trim the fat trim the fat trim the fat so they realize that they can do something with technology they get rid of those jobs i.e 
carpet for carpet manufacturing, all these things we just talked about, okay? Mm -hmm. So now that they, they get rid of all the employees, now they're saying, man, now what we want to do is we're going to take these, these what little jobs we have, we're going to go overseas with the, our companies, okay? They're going overseas. Yeah, it may have something to do with the tax structure, but trust me, there's some technology involved in that also. It's a labor cost. Exactly. And, and, and it's the, always been the but, labor but, cost. but my point is is that the labor costs that are being, the, the thing that's affecting labor costs more than anything else is the technology. And nobody's paying attention. And the guys in technology, no. uh, they're saying, they're saying the that labor, nobody's. Labor costs are so me. high here because of all the regulations on and labor. And the unions. Here. It's the unions, it's workers' comp, it's, it's personal injuries, it's, it's all the, uh, the federal uh, wage standards, it's the minimum wage standards, right? You put all that together, you have somebody in India who worked for 120th of what somebody <laughs> here will work for. Why? Because we have so many regulations on it. It's not because of te technology, is what enables them to hire the people in India, but but the reason the the weight the cost of the labor is lower is because of all the labor regulations in the United States. But you also have a, a world economy. When 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 the when corporations said we want to be involved in the world economy, okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to sell to the world. That's the first thing they did. We're going to sell to the world. Then they realized, oh, okay, now the labor pool is now global. So you can't tell me that in India. These, because business is going to gravitate towards cheap labor. That's what they do. Even if we had stayed at zero, it was still going to be cheaper to function in India. It was always going to be cheaper to mm -hmm. function in India. That's why they went over there in the first place. Before the expenses that we talked about in 2008, you could have talked about these same expenses during the Bush uh, era, and it wouldn't have made a bit of difference because the, the jobs were already being outsourced. Jobs were being outsourced 20 years ago. This is nothing new. And the thing is, is that what I'm trying to say is, is that when I'm listening to these technology guys and they're scared to death of what they're doing, we're talking about the people who are actually doing the work who are saying, you guys better get a grip on this technology thing and where this thing is going or you're going to lose a massive amount of jobs and you're going to have not just mad white guys, you're going to have mad everybody. <laughs> and <laughs> and, I, and I, I think the thing is, is that, look, the opportunity is there. What we got to do is, you got a uh, cor corporation. I'm in, I'm in technology, okay? I'm dealing with technology. I, I'm in the big data. That's why I love dealing with. And these guys, what, what they're saying is, is that we don't have enough people for these good paying jobs that we have. Why? Because people are taking liberal, art, liberal arts this, they're taking right. this, blah, 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 blah. Not only are they getting education, they're getting education and the one thing I do agree with with the government, the government should not be paying for education. That is insane. Why? Because there's no accountability. On that happy note, I'm sorry. What do you think? We'll do it again next month? Y'all so? got me all freaked out. So. <laughs> <laughs> and we weren't even trying. <laughs> Al, <clears throat> you're a man of many, uh, oh, man, many just, opinions. I'm just, yeah, I just got a big mouth. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I'm glad you joined us tonight, man. Yeah, it's I, always I, enlightening I, I, and fun. Time. Yeah, you know, we went a little like bit, a, we went a little bit over tonight, but that's church. okay. Blame Al. <laughs> <clears throat> anyway, this program will not be aired because he's the engineer and he's not over there. So I guess it's just been a conversation. No, it's right. No, oh, is it? Yeah, we're live. Yeah, I'm only kidding. Yeah, your your uh, phone's gonna be blown up, right? All right. <laughs> Well, what are you, any any last comments, last thoughts? Until um, next time. If I start, it's going to be another twenty minutes. Go ahead. Really? You want another twenty? Yeah, minutes? Yeah, yeah. I want to hear what you got to say. You, um, got, you got good stuff to say, man. Yeah. You're, 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 the, you're, you are to me. You are the hope of the Republican Party, but oh, they have nice. got to get their act together. <laughs> but it seems like your problem with the Republican Party is more of how they're losing, as opposed to why they, uh, why it's, they should win. You know why? You know why? Because with no power, you can't affect any of this stuff. They have got to win. They got to win first because if they don't win, they have no power. They can't. They can't do anything. Wanna, they can't stop anything. They can't block anything. I, they can't I, do. I anything. would agree with you about all that stuff. They got to win. I, but I want. But and I that's the thing to talk about why they should win. Like, why do you agree with their underlying principles? Like, for I example, deal with on, some on, of their on, underlying on principles. On, okay, let's talk about those. That's okay. what I, like immigration, for example. Immigration, uh, immigration to me is is almost going to be a non-issue in the future. Because I think everybody talked about immigration, stealing jobs, stealing jobs, stealing jobs, the types of jobs that, that they were doing. First of all, you're not going to be able to stop them with a wall. I've always said that there's nothing a 10-foot a wall can stop 
or nothing a 10-foot wall can do that a 20-foot rope can't fix. Tell that, I mean, <laughs> tell that to the Israelis. You know. Okay, the Israelis were look, very look effective. At the, look they at the had, North how many, Koreans. How many, how many terrorist murders did they have every week until they finally built the wall? And everybody said, oh, it's a human rights issue. You shouldn't build the wall. Don't build the wall. Don't build the wall. How big was and the wall? Happened, and then what happened? They, they stopped all the killing. How big is the wall? 40 feet high. No, 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 no. How long is the wall? Oh, it's the length of their border. Yeah, but how wide is that? It's not, it's, it might be, what, the length of Texas, maybe? No, it's not that, that big. Far. We know that there are crossing points in along our border. You got to put an army on that border to stop. We, we everybody. have an army. We it, have an army. No, our government will not let us enforce our immigration laws. Okay. I don't think the and, immigration. And at is the around. end of the day, I think a wall definitely would help. But at the end of the day, you don't need a wall. All you have to do is enforce our immigration laws the way they are right now. Okay. That's all, and you know what? You know why? Because our immigration laws right now say that if you hire an illegal alien. What, you're mm -hmm. going to be fined mm -hmm. X amount of, maybe mm -hmm. it's 10000 maybe mm -hmm. it's 10000 mm -hmm. but you're going to be fined. If you actually enforce that, they're not going to, everybody's going to go home because they're not going to be able to work here, okay? That's what you need to do to enforce it, but our government doesn't want to. Our big business doesn't want to. The church doesn't want to. Why? Because they want the illegal aliens here. Money. The Democratic Party wants the illegal aliens because they, they have the presumption that they're going to be Democrats, okay? Big business wants it because they want cheap labor. Right. The church wants it because they want more parishioners. Everybody okay? wants it. Everybody wants it except the American people. And I'm going to tell you what, <laughs> well, I'm gonna tell you, I'll tell you what the problem is. The problem is, is that the problem is not immigration. The problem is technology, and nobody wants to talk about that. That's the problem. Because right now, everybody thinks immigration, immigration. Right now, you're seven times more likely to be killed. Well, well, you're, women, women not, Adam, but you're saying that technology is the threat to the labor force. You're looking at immigration as a threat only to the labor force. And I'm saying to you that that's not the only threat that immigration poses. But, but Illegal that, immigration poses a threat to our health. It poses a threat to our, our entitlement system because when they come over, they want to get all the entitlements. Mm -hmm. And it poses a threat to our security mm -hmm. because you have not only criminals that are coming over here, hardened criminals, gang mm -hmm gang members, mm -hmm. but of course we have a bunch of terrorists coming over mm -hmm. here now. So right. I don't just look at it as a labor issue, although that's mm -hmm. part of it. There's a lot of reasons why we need to enforce immigration. You know laws. what I'd be interested in, and I'll do the numbers, I'll try to see if I can crunch the numbers, I'd be interested to see how much it costs to protect that border, which is like 50 zillion miles long, to protect that border versus the cost of what we're having to pay. If I'd we don't really have an enforceable what? border, change we don't the rules have a of country. Look, you we, want to make we, it really cheap? Had, really cheap? Okay, change the rules of engagement. Now, when somebody comes across the border, fire. Boom, boom, boom. Guess what? People are not going to be crossing the border anymore. If okay? you try to That's cross how, the border in solution. China or North Korea, you not only have to get through a wall, you've got to get through a minefield, and you've got to get through machine gun towers. Well, we can't have our cake and eat it, too, because on one side, we're saying minute. we don't why want to be Why can't we have those same you just, that, That's why. Because, why? We can't, because we can't have our cake and eat it, too. One side of us no, says I, we, I, do not want to be, we do not want to be North Korea over here, but we do but, want to be North Korea over here. We're enforcing our borders. No, 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 we not, can't say, okay, well, North Korea shoots people over here. Why can't we? Why can't we shoot them? That's my Why can't we shoot people coming over the border? Give me a reason why we can't. That's an invasion. Why can't we shoot people when they come over the border? Because, again, the same things that are going on in North Korea, you might say, okay, well, hey, we don't want this part For, of North forget Korea. Forget that they're a communist well, country. The, the, no, you can't forget Why that. can't you shoot people you violating your that. border? That is, part of the, that is part of the whole situation. Wait a second. No, you're they, not giving me eat, an answer. They eat food in North Korea. We, we shouldn't eat food here because then we'll be like North Korea, right? They eat food there. That's, 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 I've heard those arguments. It's a ridiculous argument. That's my point. No, let's talk about the underlying principles. Okay. Do we have the right of self-defense? And is it not a defensive issue to keep illegal immigrants out because of health, health and security issues? It's an invasion. I think that... You I can shoot that, people when I, they cross your okay, border. Okay, here's, here's the thing. Here's the thing. One of the reasons that the Republican Party, I would even say, has dropped the ball on immigration. And I'm not saying that they're totally at fault. I really fought both parties. That's why I say I would probably vote independent because... I just don't like both parties right now. Well, then but, your vote's not going to count. Well, that's okay. No, it my might, vote counts it to might, me. It might, no, no, it might. I mean, there's, there's other... It counts to me. Uh, there could be independent uh, candidates who actually have a chance. Right. And, and you never know. I mean, you know, they didn't say Ross Perot popped up and they go, oh, my God, <laughs> you know, because he was getting votes, you know. But my thing is this. When it comes to the Republican Party and immigration, again, I think what needs to be done is, is one of the things one of the things that made this country great we talk about make this country great again one of the things that made this country great was our ability to sit down and talk sit down and negotiate now the thing is is that what's happened is, is everybody's gotten into this rock throwing contest you're not cooperating i'm not you're not cooperating you're not cooperating 
that's not what made this country great. They were always able to sit down and work out some sort of deal or some sort of agreement where I didn't get everything I wanted. Because nine times, are you married? Yes. Okay, are you married? Mm -hmm. Okay, Last I'm telling you, you're, <laughs> you're not going to live in that house. And one party going to get everything. But I'm not married to the government. No, no. But the, the government but, is but my the, servant. But no, but the, and they're but, not but, serving but, me. But, well. but but right now there are more Democrats than there are Republicans. Who says? Dude, I got stats all over the place say the Look, same thing. Okay, the, but my, my point if is, you go from east to point, west. Even if it's fifty fifty, even, even if it's fifty fifty, my point is, is that you got to sit down, and you got to talk. Middle because that's America. the only way the house Look, works. Middle you America can, is going to rise up this you, time. You can, you can if they sit down, down and talk, you can sit down and talk with your wife, and you can you can have a debate about, mm -hmm. and you can work out and negotiate and compromise on mm -hmm. things like where you're going to eat tonight, and where do you want to take your well, vacation? Where we're going to spend the money. Okay, we're but what happens when your wife says to you, "Okay, I want to take in a, I want to have taken a board." To live, who lives in this house who has leprosy <laughs> and you say no 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 that, no no we, we can't talk about that we're not going to take anybody who has leprosy and your wife says no 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 that's what I want and that's what's going to happen but you're talking no, how do you compromise on leprosy you say okay you, look you we're, not, we're, not, we're, not, we're not we're not going to do this is what we're talking about we're not going to do leprosy Obamacare. but what we'll do is we'll do, leprosy, we'll do Airbnb okay? if you want to meet people or whatever it is your thing is cool we'll do it through Airbnb but we're not doing leprosy thing okay so now that's the compromise <laughs> what's no. Airbnb <laughs> People, people visit from other places. Oh, he's they, talking yeah. about a, a, allowing your house to be used. Uh, if you want to meet people, they can come you, and stay. It's a and blah, swapping blah, blah. thing and right. it's a commercial thing. It's big. It's a, it's a, it's a billion dollar business. Think about Uber but with your house. Okay. Right, right, right. Listen, uh, all these people, not all, but a great mass majority of the people that are Hispanic, number one, that I have observed, okay, do not speak English even with their children. Mm-hmm. What the hell is the matter with them? The kids are going to grow up not knowing English. They're in an e English-speaking country. I was in McDonald's over here, and there's a woman talking to her kids, and you can tell the kids are like their school age, mm -hmm. and it's all Spanish. And I'm thinking, what the hell is the matter with you? Teach them English. When my grandparents came here from other countries, the first thing they did was go to English class. The immigrants of today do not want to assimilate. Yeah. They want to change our culture, and it ain't going to happen. That's the problem. It ain't going to happen. That's the problem with the It's Republican not a party. problem. That is a problem. No, because it isn't. Because well, the let's thing see is, why he says it's a problem. I, I agree with you, but I want to hear what he's got to say. Why no, is that a problem? Because the thing is, is that what's happening is, is that the they made the announcement a few months ago, whatever, you know, that, that right now there are more minority babies in this country than there are white babies for the first time in history. Okay. My point is, is that America is turning colors, changing colors. Now you, you've got all, a whole, and I'm not, I didn't say black, white, green, and purple. I'm just saying that you've got white children over here and you've got... Uh, minorities over so here. My, no, no, no. Freedom is freedom for you people. Freedom is freedom for those people. It's right. for everybody. It's the same principles. Okay? I, I, I got that. I got that. But well, my, my, it but my point is, what color no, no, no. Is. My point is, is that things are changing. And what happens is, is that again, the Republican Party is saying no, 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 no. And I'm trying to tell y'all. It's not going to be no, no, no. It's going to change, whether you like it or not. They thought they were going to beat Obama the first time. And they had a guy who was a war hero, but I get it. Then they came the second time with somebody I'll who... I'll tell you gonna, one thing. I'm telling you. I'm telling you one thing, one reason why Obama won the second time around. Only one reason. Because Romney did not have the balls to take the gloves off and confront this guy and forget the color issue. Oh, no, no. It had nothing to do with color. Bullshit. <laughs> Bullshit. Don't tell me that. We've been soft-pedaling around this guy for eight years, Al. Don't tell I'm me telling, that. I'm telling you. No. I'm telling you. I can, watch, I can watch, speak watch to what? all of my friends, people of all colors and races, and they say the same thing. He's been treated with kid gloves because of the color of his skin. When he got into office, not the because way, of the what way, the hell he knows, but the way he, when and he what he's got, accomplished. But when he got, which into, is zero. You know, you got people on the other side of the fence say, yeah, he was treated differently because of the color of his skin. But that's why they said we are not going to vote on anything that you. They said talk about before. white privilege in this country. There's black privilege, and he's living proof of it. You're right. You got you got pretty privilege. They talk about that too. I mean, you. Got I all, never had had any privilege growing up as a white guy. I had to work my ass off. Well, trust me, I know the game. And I went to a high school that was 97% black in the hood in Chicago. You worked your way out. You better it. believe it. Yeah, I understand it. I was the minority. I know what that's trust, like. I was the minority in my school. I get it. My no. point is, is that the thing is, is that we're going, the Republican Party 
has got to find another way to function because the thing, and that's just my opinion. I get, I get I, your I, opinion. I, I understand. I get your opinion. I understand what you guys are saying in terms of what is right. I get the right part, you know. But the thing is, is that when I when I go to a Republican, a, me and my wife are sitting in a Republican meeting. They talk about Brownie Town and all that. What, that is, what, just, that, what does that mean? Even I don't. They, I, don't they, I mean, you know, they talk about a black a city that's got minorities in it. They'll call it Brownie Town, or they talk. In other words, they refer to the skin color, you know, in in various different issues, as opposed to just saying people. We want to just be people. Just like everybody else. I, I Why does that you, I've been to many, many Republican events, and I have never heard anything I've never like heard that. I've been to Tea I'm Party meetings. I haven't that. heard that. What I'm saying is that that is not, it, it, to the extent it has happened to you, I, I, I think that that is an, an abnormality in the Republican Party. But see, that's the thing. It's an abnormality to you. My reality is still my reality. We went to those meetings. We were hearing stuff that we should not have been hearing from that party. Okay, that's my reality. That's not, I understand you have your reality, but my reality was totally different. You remember, and, when, remember when Herman Cain was running for president? Mm -hmm. I was in the Canton uh, Tea Party at the time. He was mm -hmm. a guest speaker several times. Make a long story short, we did straw polls of all the candidates. Herman mm -hmm. Cain won twice. I believe it. And these are all white people. I believe it. Because believe they it. liked his... Look how well Ben Carson was all but, 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 but what yeah. I, I'm not there wasn't saying. any racial thing, man. It was no, no, all no, no, about no, no, what he was no, no, about. No. What I'm trying to say, the, what I'm trying to say is, is that again, America is changing. Hispanics, you know what they said? That Hispanics are going to be going to have two percent more voters this time, which is probably about t almost ten percent growth in their voter base. Okay, this this time around, and. I think they they Mitt Romney lost all kind of Hispanic vote. the the reason that the reason that the, the uh, Republican Party is losing right now is because they're not engaging. I don't need Don, Donald Trump is let he's me, made everybody mad. Let me take that okay. issue and flip the coin on mm -hmm. it just for a moment. Okay, my mm -hmm. observation, and mm -hmm. I respect what you're saying. Yeah, it's got to be if, more inclusive. Is all I'm saying. Okay, it, that's all. I'm here's saying. the deal. If the Hispanics, and I understand the white population is going down, the brown and black population is going up. No, it's demographic. We're all people. It's demographics. But, That's all but it is. Here's the thing. If the people coming into this country are majority Hispanic speaking and they don't assimilate to our culture, our ways, our traditions, and our country, mm -hmm. they're going to turn this into a third world country so if you're, in so, a generation. So if you, you're right. And they're what, escaping from the third world now. I think, I think the, argument is, the argument here needs to be understood. I'm not saying you're wrong. My point is, what are you going to do about it? Because what I've seen the Republican Party doing is not working. And that's what I'm talking well, about. You know, a, lot of, a lot of this is you get the Republicans get a very bad rap by the media, which which obviously sympathizes and endorses the, the, the Democratic Party. So they promote this false narrative that the Republican Party is the white man's party, mm -hmm. that they're racist mm -hmm. and they're not inclusive. Mm -hmm. Okay, the question is... Is what more can the Republican Party do to quote be inclusive? What what should it do? The Republican Party is coming up with solutions that should be working for everybody, not for white people, but for all Americans. Now, what should they have to do? Do they have to send out a special invitation to somebody you know of what? a different color? You know what's interesting to me? What you just asked. That's considered to me to be the hard question. And that question has got to stop being a question that nobody deals with. And people got to sit down and ask the hard questions. Look, guys, we're losing this media battle. What are we going to do about it? What are we going to do? Because you can't just sit there and say, oh, well, the media is mean to us. Or, you know, I mean, I, blah, 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 this, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so they're not speaking English. They're speaking Spanish. I get all of that. But the thing is, if nobody does anything about it, it's going to happen. And that's my point, is that somewhere along the line, the Republican Party has got to say, okay, you know what, we need to probably bring in some people who really get this, who really understand these cultures, who really understand what it is that they want, and really no, understand how no, we can... No, the white European migration here of the early uh, 20th century, mm -hmm. they, this, the people that were in this country already didn't give a damn about but their cultures Dennis, coming in but here. But Dennis, I get because that. Because they wanted them to assimilate to but be Dennis, Americans, you can't, you and they can't did. Go back, you can't board, go back 40, 50, 60, 70 Why years. Why not? Because that's not the way it's working right but now. that formula worked. I know, it worked in the past. It's not working right now. That's and my point. If we don't what, make what, it work again, it's going to be Well, then it's going to be. That's my point. It's just going to be. What should the Republicans do? That's what, the question. What, what do you so, think they should do? Nobody's asking the question. I don't think it's what the Republicans should do. What I think is that you should have thinkers. Good leaders and thinkers in these other communities, which have been tr been trained by the Democratic elite establishment to be divisive. Yeah. You need people from within to say, wait a second, we've been sold a bill of goods by the Democrats. 
Okay, the Republicans who aren't necessarily doing a good job communicating to us are actually do have the better answers. And let me explain to you in terms that you can understand why we need people in those communities you know to what? give that message. You know what? Because what else can these Republicans do? You know what? My thing is, is that if you really, 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 and, and I know people in America. One of the things I like about America is that when Americans want to do something, they get it done. That's just our nature. I'm talking about white, green, black, purple, whatever it is. We, once we, that's what makes America great. Talk about making America great again. That's what makes America great is that we get the job done. So my whole thing is, is that I know that if the Republican Party really wanted to make these changes, to be more inclusive and to find, a, find ways to what make changes. Th that's my point. Nobody, you don't have the answers because nobody's but talking about it. But you're saying they need to make changes. I'm saying I'm not, fine. No, I'm not, tell me what changes you're thinking. I'm not going to do their work for them no, because, first of all, they're not going to listen to me anyway. I'm suggesting that we don't need to make any changes. The, 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 but you okay. can't identify I agree them. with Matt. And, and that's my whole point. Sit there and not make the changes and see what happens. I'm telling you. I, I take the other side of that. Mm -hmm. People, you want to come in our country, get in line legally. When you get here, assimilate. Number one, learn the language. Number two, learn the culture. Number three, leave everything that you had and, and your values behind. You're in a new environment now. That would take care of the immigration problem. That's an, that's an opinion. And that that's, would not take care of the... That's, I mean... That would help. That would help. <laughs> that would give me a steer in the right direction. <laughs> right. That, but, but my point is, is that that's an opinion, and I get it, and I can respect that. My whole point is, is that I'm saying somebody needs to figure out what's going on in reality not our not a, a a subjective opinion but an objective understanding of what's going on and the republican party needs to ask these hard questions because they're losing that battle and if they don't ask that question then nothing will change you can't just say i'm right and it needs to be this way and this is the way it has to be because if you lose the election you, you don't have the power to in to 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 put into place the things that you believe in winning is the first thing it's not the second thing being right i get being right you know everybody knows oj kill everybody knows oj knife those people to death but the thing is he got a lawyer win law best argument wins now, he got the best argument he won i will leave, I will leave, minutes, I will leave you with this if you agree with the underlying principles of the republican party the mm -hmm. changes that you're after should be adopted by you you need to go into your communities and explain to people in the black community, at least, this is why the Republican Party is better for everybody, including us. But, but you know what? You know what? It needs to be a thing where Republicans are coming with me. Because what happens is I go talk to them. They say, well, Republicans don't care nothing about me. Where are they at? And I turn around and ain't, nothing, ain't a Republican for miles. You. You know? I'll go with you. But my whole point is, is that, but, but I, I get it. But you know why you're saying you'll go with me? Because you and I have sat down and said, okay, we got to do some, What are we going to do about this problem? Just that quick, you and I came up with half a solution. Okay, Al, you go talk to the community. And you said, oh, oh I'll go with you. Okay, boom, now we're talking. But my point is, is that you see how long that took? I'll, I'll go with take you, but I don't know if you guys want to take that, 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 Yeah, come on, man. Come on, Dennis. But the whole thing, but the whole thing is, is that if you if if the Republican Party has has good things to say, good ideas, blah 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 blah, you have the media in the way. Yes. So you have got you accept that as a fact, and then find ways to work around that. And even if you have to do it a little bit at a time, because this thing is not going to, that ship didn't go in that direction overnight. It's not going to be turned around overnight. It has to be a slow grind. But the thing is, the Republican Party, that's why I say the Republican half party as a whole has to want this. You and I can go do it, and we go out and do the uh, little the Mormon, you know, thing the, where you walk around with our little backpacks and white shirts. I can assure you, them. having been to many, many Republican <laughs> events, that at, at least in Georgia, there is a very... Um, effective outreach program. It's called outreach, uh, minority outreach program. And of course they want it. You don't think the Republicans know that the demographics are changing? You don't think that they want black people and Hispanics in their party? I'm going to tell you what they I've seen. They have to have them in I'm there. I'm going to tell you what I've seen. What I've seen is black, po black people trying to assimilate into the Republican Party. I haven't seen it the other way around. I haven't seen the outreach. What I've seen is black people saying, like me and my wife, when we were trying to what, go to these, you these what do you what would you expect to see? What would you insist on seeing from the Republican you've got Party? To, you've got you've got to want their vote. It's almost like that's almost I'm like Donald Trump. You, listen, I, listen, like I Donald Trump. That they want their, of course they want their vote. Now, but nobody knows it. But nobody knows it. They're not saying it loud and clear. They're not standing up from the rooftop. They need to say it. You need. To, we're talking about turning a ship here. We're not talking about the. Hey man, I really no, want know who said it loudly? What words would you have them say? 
You would have to go in and say, look, we really want your vote. We want to know about your issues, blah, 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 blah. Can we sit and come down and talk to you? I mean, can you can you get four or five people together and I'll come and I'll talk to you? I, I want to know, blah, 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 blah. I'm with the Republican Party, but we really, I would respect that. I would respect somebody saying, look, I'm going to come to your house, I, I, you know, or, or come to my house. We'll have dinner, you know, and I would like to have four or five black people, you know, black families, you know, right. wild husband and wife. Y'all come and, 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 and we're talking about. Who are these people that you think are just sitting around that have, can go out and, 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 and do this full time? I didn't say do it full time. No, but I mean, uh, do it at all. Who's going to do it? That's my point. If you, if my, my point is, is that when, who's when, doing that for the Democrats? When, when the Democratic Party already has vote black vote. That's my point. If you <laughs> want the vote, you're going to have vote to fight shot. for it. Hey, we're running talking, over is that right? Is that right? You talk about I fighting totally for it. I totally agree with Al. Right? You got to fight for it. If you want it, <laughs> fight for it. Oh, this has Amen. been a spirited debate as I knew it would be tonight. Folks, we uh, had intended to do 30 minutes, but as you can see, we've done 60. You coached we, me. We, we, <laughs> you coached me. <laughs> and it's all because of him. I had no idea. He yeah, was I mean, so long-winded. I mean, I mean, <laughs> and I think we want him back. <laughs> Oh, but uh, boy, it's been a spirited show, and we yeah. got a lot. Uh, a lot I got some strong, choice words out of you, man. Strong, I, did, I did good. A lot of strong <laughs> feelings. That's the, I love this because <laughs> as friends, we can we can express ourselves. It's a debate. It's, it's a debate. debate. It's a healthy right. debate. You and, you know, have healthy we debate. all have strong feelings, but bottom line is, we're all proud Americans. We want to mm -hmm. see this country go in the right direction. Very true. And uh, you know, I think on that uh, happy note, we'll all say good night oh. until next month. I'm Dennis Aloya. By the way, I do magic shows. Give me a call, oh. or you can, uh, you know, uh, email the network, and they'll contact me. Matt, you want to give them a quick uh, phone number on how they can contact you for your Schwartz business? Law Group, www.schwartzlawgroup.com, or you can give my office a call at area code 678-401-2400, 678-401-2400. Al? And, and something I wanted to say, go to my Twitter page, Al Burroughs, B-U-R-R-O-U-J-H-S. Go to my Twitter page. There's a 30-minute video, Bloomberg video, on uh, the rise of the machines. Okay, so a lot of this stuff that I was talking about is on that Twitter page. Watch it. It, it, will, it will blow your mind, some of the stuff. That, the, these little robots that they got people now serving them in McDonald's restaurants over in Asia and stuff like that. The robot bring you a meal and stuff. It's, it's incredible. So check that out, Al Burroughs. And just scroll down. You'll see it because I put on there, there's a target on the back of your job. So... You'll see it. And in case you can't find Al's website, just type in Al Burroughs, future Republican congressman from <laughs> Georgia. That's right. You'll find him. I no, I'm going gonna, gonna to be your running mate. Good night, everybody. <laughs> he's about two weeks away from registering as a Republican. I guarantee it. <laughs> All right. See you later. See you later.